Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's first video. We're going to have a look at the weather next 30 days uh, for the UK and for Europe as well. Uh, for today's first video, so as always on Tuesday, uh, we do our month ahead 30 day look ahead. And uh, yeah, I shall get on with that for you uh, very shortly. Just say that coming up later on today, we're going to have a uh, 10 to 14 day video update, including all our red features. And that will be with you uh, later on this afternoon. Uh, so with this, we actually stop, we can go six weeks out, but we stop at uh, week four as it's a month head uh, look at. But we will show you weeks five and six uh, data tomorrow in our live stream, which will be uh, from six o'clock in the evening. So so we'll stop this at uh, uh, week four, but you will be able to see weeks five and six uh, from this uh, update, from today's update of the ECM Def extended model uh, in the live stream tomorrow. Uh, it'll be a model updates twice a week, once on Tuesday, once on Friday. On a Friday, we will do a full six weeks look ahead um, for the UK and for Ireland uh, as well. So just a way of juggling all of the data because because there's a lot to see now uh, with ECMDF.iot. And it's absolutely fantastic that they have opened up their, uh, you know, their, their treasure trove of charts. So thank you so much uh, for them uh, for doing that. Right, let's get on with it then. Uh, so we're going to start off with the uh, week one, mean sea level pressure anomaly. This is going to take us uh, from the 9th through to the 16th of uh, November. Uh, so with this, with this, the brighter the colour, the higher the pressure, really. So, so the deeper the pink, uh, the higher the pressure, basically. But, but the darker the blue, or the darker the green, I suppose, turquoise, isn't it, really? Um, but the darker the sort of turquoise, uh, then, then the lower the pressure. Uh, so week one mean solar pressure anomaly has high pressure sitting uh, to the north and the east, dominating most of Europe, but we have got deep low pressure out in the North Atlantic, means that the squeeze of the isobars is going to be coming up from the south. So so we'll be drawing up southerly winds uh, on the, across western and central parts of Europe anyway, drawing up southerly winds uh, on the warm side of the ridge. Conversely though, there is a cold side of this ridge, and that cold side ridge will see cold air coming out of the north and the northeast down into southeastern parts of Europe, probably. So again, it's one of the way that the weather system balances out. If it's very mild in the north and in the west, it will tend to be colder in the east, and particularly uh, in the southeast too, on the uh, eastern side of that ridge of high pressure. Uh, so this is how the uh, week one temperature anomaly is uh, shaping up. Again, this is from the 9th through to 16th of November. You can see quite clearly a west, uh, northwest, a southeast sort of split to the temperatures. So it's going to be cold of an average week across many parts of western Russia and into the far east of Europe. And then down into southeastern Europe too. Uh, winter really setting in, for example, around the Balkans. And then going north up towards Black Sea. And particularly into the south and the west of Russia. Same time, though, very mild in the north and in west. So Scandinavia is coming out uh, in those uh, quite dark orange colours on the temperature scale. That's going to be around three to six degrees uh, above average. We see similar temperature anomalies through France and more widely, sort of in those salmon uh, pink colours, which is kind of like one to two degrees above average. So it's going to be very mild across much of northern and western Europe in the weekend. Uh, colder in the east and the southeast of Europe. Mediterranean-wise, we look like this, but in the east-west split, it looks very mild across the central and western part of the Mediterranean, from Italy back to Spain and Portugal. But in the far southeastern part of the Mediterranean, particularly around Greece, does look a little bit cooler uh, through there. And the precipitation normally for week one, going from the 9th through to 16th of November, is looking like this. Um, so, uh, largely dry on average, most parts of Europe dominated by high pressure, of course. It's a little bit wet average to the extreme west of Europe. So, Ireland into the far west of Scotland, up into the North Atlantic, a little bit wet average there. Otherwise, though, it's a dry of an average week coming up uh, across most parts of uh, Europe. So, so yeah, I mean, it's dry through the vast majority of the Mediterranean. It's dry as we go up into Northern Europe as well. That's also a little bit more unsettled around the Black Sea, maybe, and some of that could be snow, uh, of course, as the air is getting colder. Uh, and like to the very far south of Greece and down in the far southern part of the Med, looks, uh, or southeast part of the Med, it does look a um, little bit wetter through there, maybe some thunderstorms being triggered by those cold uh, temperatures running in over the warm uh, Mediterranean Sea. But, but overall, generally, it's a dry scene. High pressure is in control, and so uh, it's dry through the majority of uh, Europe. It's very mild in the west and the north, and it's cooler or colder in the east and in the southeast. Right, we go through to uh, week two. 
which takes us from the 16th to the 23rd of November. This is how uh, we're looking. So a change in the orientation of the ridge sort of pulls the ridge back more in towards the west of Europe, really. So it looks like high pressure is pulling back more towards the western part of Europe. Low pressure is up here. You can see where the jet stream is still going to be. So jet stream is still going to be uh, through there. And so, again, most parts of Europe are in about ridge of high pressure. Uh, it's still going to be quite mild, I would have thought, as the air is still going to be coming up from like a southerly, southwesterly type direction as we're on the mild side of the jet stream. Again, it looks like it would be colder in this southeastern corner. On That's where the cold side of the ridge uh, will be. So in the far east and southeast, it looks like we will have a colder uh, regime through there. The week two temperature anomaly, again, northwest south be split quite clearly in evidence. So much of the north and the west of Europe looks mild or very mild, particularly mild around Scandinavia and through the Baltic Sea into the far, far north of Europe. Uh, there, again, we're around three to six degrees above average on that temperature scale. Widely across the west of Europe, we're like one to three degrees above average. Come over to the eastern side of Europe, though, and again, it's cold and average. Uh, through there. So again, from like Greece and Turkey, go northwards into the Balkans, over to Black Sea, up to like Ukraine, and then heading up in towards uh, western, southwestern Russia. Yes, below average temperatures there. The interior, like the interior of Russia just here, is going very, very cold. I think there we go down to around, that's right, we'll be going down to around uh, 8 to 10 degrees below average on the temperature scale. So very, very cold through central parts of uh, Russia on the eastern side of this ridge of high pressure. But out in west of Europe, in the north of Europe, it does look mild or very mild. The precipitation anomaly uh, looks like that. So just going a little bit more on south across the northern parts of uh, Europe, we see Scandinavia, for example, uh, going uh, slightly above average with precipitation anomaly. Some of that just extending down in towards Germany and uh, Poland uh, as well. It's driving average in the west and in the southwest, so that's where the ridge of high pressure is still dominating. It's a little bit driving average over on the eastern side of Europe as well. The southeastern corner of the Med is a little bit wetter than average uh, through there. Uh, so, again, it's just the idea that, uh, like, the jet stream came a bit further south, was it turned a bit more unsettled across the northern parts of Europe, but still this high pressure goes on and continues to dominate, particularly in the west and in the southwest of Europe. Mediterranean-wise, by the way, uh, looking pretty dry through most parts of the Med, a little bit more unsettled in that eastern, southeast part of the Mediterranean. Uh, right, week three is going to be the 23rd uh, of November to the 30th of November. Um, so uh, with this one, we're still... Weaker signals, of course. We're going further out, so signals are getting a bit weaker. Still got high pressure dominating right, across the west and the southwest Europe. It looks like there might be some sort of trough plunging into northern and northeastern Europe. This might be starting to send the jet stream on a northwest southeast alignment. And so this area could be starting to turn colder, like from Scandinavia through the Baltic Sea in towards the northeast of Europe, those those northeastern uh, European uh, states like like Latvia, Estonia, uh, those sort of areas might be getting colder through through this week. Um, the UK would be on the periphery of that, would just be on the periphery, I think. Oh, and this ridge is probably still keeping like the west and the southwest of Europe and much of the Mediterranean are pretty mild. Let's see what the temperature anomalies are doing. Uh, for the last week of November. So, I mean, they're still a little bit above average, even now, uh, across Scandinavia. They are lowering. Uh, the temperature only is lowering across Scandinavia and the northeast of Europe in this third week. But it's still a bit above average. I think if that trough does plunge through, it'll be colder than that, actually. I think it would be a little bit colder than that suggests across Scandinavia and North Europe, if that if that trough plunges in with a northwest southeast alignment to the jet stream. Uh, still a bit below average with temperature on the, in the eastern, southeastern part of the, of the Mediterranean and southeastern Europe, although the cold temperature anomalies are fading a little bit. Uh, out to the west, it looks pretty mild. Um, just generally, the temperature anomaly looks like it's lowering here across most parts of Europe. That might be, uh, you know, that could be because we're going further out, so the signal is getting weaker. 
But given the means of pressure anomaly, I would suspect it probably is sort of cooling down, actually. That ridge looks like it's slipping further southwards and southwestwards, allowing a bit of a northwest southeast alignment to jet stream. And that will probably start to lower the temperature in the last week of, uh, of November. We are focusing on the last week of November to potentially bring a cold snap to northern Europe. So the hints might be there, but, but it is quite a weak signal. Uh, precipitation anomalies uh, looking like this. So it's still pretty dry. Uh, dry and average signal for like the west of Europe, Ireland, UK, France, northern Spain. Still looking a little bit dry and average. Most parts of Mediterranean uh, still looking dry and average. Northern Europe looks still a bit more unsettled there. And some eastern parts of Europe looking a little bit more unsettled uh, there as well. Otherwise, we've probably got no signal for precipitation in week three. And then lastly for this uh, video, uh, week four which is going to take us from uh, the 30th of November to 7th of December. That's how we're looking with mean cell pressure anomaly uh, then. So still this idea in the works of higher pressure through like southern Europe. There's, there's some higher pressure down here, particularly through the Mediterranean. Lower pressure looks like it's heading in towards the west of Russia. And again, otherwise very little uh, in the way of a signal. There's some higher pressure towards Greenland, but it is quite a weakish sort of signal. But otherwise it looks like... Um, uh, you know, signals are weakening uh, there for week four in the, in the first week of December, of course. Uh, the temperature anomaly uh, looks like that. So, a uh, little bit more than average in Mediterranean. Still more than average from Russia, Scandinavia and into the northeast of Europe. A bit cooler than average or cold average. Still in the far east and southeast part of Europe. And just seeing it going a little bit colder perhaps in the North Atlantic. Uh, maybe. So, so again, might just be like a slight indication. I think getting a little bit colder at the end of November and into the beginning of December. But it is a very weak signal. Um, Precipitation-wise, uh, again, you know, really weak signals uh, coming through once more. So, uh, northern Europe, uh, Scandinavia, perhaps a little bit wetter. Southern, southeast Europe in particular, a little bit drier. Does look pretty dry in the North Atlantic. So, again, that might be the idea that there's some sort of ridging going on a bit of a mid-Atlantic ridge, which if that did come off, it would bring something a bit colder into the north and the west of uh, Europe. Uh, so it's very tentative, isn't it? Very tentative uh, for like the end of November and start of December. It looks like the next couple of weeks we're going to see this classic northwest south east split. So, so it's going to be very mild, but pretty dry in the north and west. And it's going to be a lot colder in the east and the southeast uh, of Europe, winter biting into the east and the southeast part of Europe, uh, it stays mild in the north and west. Beyond that, there are a few hints here, I think, that we may be seeing signs of something a little bit colder to the north and the west during the end of November and into the start of December. But it is a very, very weak and tentative signal, very flimsy. And uh, and so I think we need to be very cautious about that at the moment. It could be something that the signal gets stronger a little bit later on into November. But at the moment, I think it needs to stay very, very cautious on the idea of something colder coming up for the end of uh, November and start of December. But nevertheless, there are a few hints there that the last week of November and possibly the first week of December sees a bit of a change, something a bit colder for the north and west of Europe. But before then, very mild in the northwest, a lot colder in the east and in the southeast. Uh, right, so uh, we'll extend out even further in the live stream tomorrow, looking at weeks five and six uh, data from the ECM to FX day model. And as, as I say, on Friday, we'll do a full six weeks look ahead uh, on Friday. So that's going to be absolutely great. Uh, so coming up later on, we're going to have a 10 to 14 day bear update. That will include all our regular features as well. So come back to that then. Uh, for this one, though, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.